Welcome back to the Coronavirus in Kansas Small Business Survival Video Series. I am Matt DeSarl, a video producer here in Lawrence, Kansas, and today I am joined by Travis Barrett, owner, co-owner of Evolution Athletics here in Lawrence, Kansas. Travis, let's jump right into it. Can you please uh, tell the audience what you uh, what your business is under normal circumstances? Yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. Um, so under normal circumstances, we are a sport performance facility. Uh, we primarily work with junior high, high school, uh, some collegiate athletes. Um, okay, great. And then I, I will note that we, we will be showing some archival footage um, of Travis's gym here as we go along, but just know that uh, they've shut down the gym uh, as per the stay at home order here in Douglas County, Kansas. And so what you're looking at is previous footage as, as in full disclosure, full disclosure uh, my company has worked with Travis in, in Evolution Athletic in the past. So, um, Travis, speaking of video content and producing content for your audience and, and for your members, for your clients, um, you know, it's it's obviously no secret that personal trainers have content everywhere on YouTube, um, and especially now, trainers, coaches, massage therapists, yoga yoga instructors, um, you know, everyone is kind of ramping up the content machine right now at their at their homes. Um, is there any concern for you being a business that has a physical uh, presence that has a competitive advantage, maybe in terms of your size and scale that at, in a moment like this, in this next month, you're kind of competing on an even playing field where everyone's home? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think our, our competitive advantage is just the, uh, the, the knowledge base that we have in terms of from a scientific standpoint, as well as um, being practitioners in our day to day. And, uh, you know, I, I look at some of the other uh, personal trainers or coaches in our in our market and they're they're very, very, very good scientifically or they're very good practitioners, but uh, very few are doing the blend of what we're doing. So um, and I encourage people to go out and try to learn as much as they can. Uh, but just something unique about our voices is going to resonate with with people diff differently and uh, hopefully they can you know, think of it a new way or learn something new when they hear what we have to say. So what, what is sort of your contingency plan here uh, for the next month is to still, um, you know, personally train individuals and to keep your members, um, your clients, especially, um, you know, a large set, uh, contingency of those being high school kids, keeping them active here in the right sort of ways. Yeah, man, that's been, that's been a challenge as we've seen this thing progress. So you know, with nationally, when they said, hey, small gatherings of, you know, it went from what, 1,000 to 500 to 250 to 10 or whatever. So hard part is all of these sports getting canceled. And kids, I remember being that age and them having and having that energy, like I needed to just burn it off and do something. So we're having to get really creative and get creative in ways where, hey, you can't go do this with your friends right now. How can you do this at home? So some things that we've been doing, we've been posting uh, like daily at home workouts that you can do with no equipment, with minimal equipment, um, things you probably have lying around the house. And then one little uh, thing that we've done with it is we've just put kind of a competitive spin on it. So we might say like, hey, three to five rounds, let's see how you do and then tag some of your friends. And then people wanna see, you know, who's doing what, and then they're going to compete with it and continue being active. So that's with the athletes. With personal training clients um, I've been working with, it's um, I had to completely pivot what I was doing, where it was more of everything's in person to now exclusively online. And, you know, I'm using, an, using a software called True Coach, and that has turned out to be very, very good, uh, getting a very positive response. So for me personally, this might be a great change, you know, for my business, but um, for for EA, you know, kids are definitely missing uh, the community aspect, the physical, you know, this is where I go, here's who I see, here's what I do. So uh, I'm sure once this 30 day thing is up, they're gonna be back in there, ready to go, so. And, you know, in, in being at your, at your facility, it's the sports science of Lawrence. It's very sophisticated equipment. It's real. I mean, it's one-on-one -on -one coaching where, you know, uh, you know, every minute there's feedback that you're giving your athletes in terms of how to elevate their performance. So um, I guess, I mean, is there, um, is, 
it has the thought ever crossed your mind that that just cannot be done at home? Yeah. Well, thank you for the compliment, you know, for the sports science. That's nice. Um, but yeah, they're, they're definitely not getting the exact same training effect that they would get. Um, they're not getting the immediate feedback like they would normally get. Um, and we know it's less than ideal, but, um, you know, not everything can be optimal all the time. So um, this will work in the meantime. It'll, it'll keep them out of trouble, hopefully, and uh, keep their capacity high. Um, give them something to look forward to um, because I know some kids, um, you know, strength conditioning is definitely a, a mental health. Um, there's something about it where it positively affects mental health as well. So um, I know, I know kids look forward to that part of their day. So um, it's not optimal, but it's something in the meantime, and then we can figure out better ways of doing things all the time. I can, I can relate to that given this, uh, video series happening in my in my home office here where I should be editing uh, higher production value uh, projects <laughs> right now. But um, so did I see on social media that you're renting out equipment? And if so, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so Tyler, Tyler had a great idea. He said, man, you know, our, our equipment's just going to be sitting there. And we need to get some stuff out to some people. So um, he put together some packages. I can't remember the pricing. But essentially, there's 30 day packages that we can rent out and it's you know package a is like a mini band and a dumbbell uh package b is like a mini band a super band and a dumbbell and package c is uh some mini bands and a uh, barbell and plates and so far we've had several uh several parents come and pick up their stuff for their kids and um you know we had it set out for them and just come pick it up and sign a sign a little thing saying if anything happens to it we're we'll pay for it during the media briefing that health and government officials gave here in Douglas County uh, this week, you know, they, they acknowledged aloud that there's a lot of nuance to this, but the spirit of the order is to stay at home. So, yeah. I mean, was there any thought given to, Hey, you know, we can recreate this in different ways. Let's keep the kids home and not have them physically come to our gym and pick up a piece of equipment. Like, why was that? Why was that necessary? If I'm if I'm bringing a high schooler to your to your gym to jump out of the car and grab the equipment, like what's the protocol now for them to sanitize that equipment and yeah. to, and protect that space, you know, from actually uh, becoming uh, you know a transmitter of this of this disease. Good, yeah. Okay. Um, I got you. Yeah. So our our uh, let's see our sanitation has definitely stepped up. And we're make, we've wiped down things I don't know how many times. And we've, you know, mopped the floors and made sure they are clean. And everybody's doing a great job about making sure the place is sanitized and clean. Um, but basically what's happening right now is we're cleaning the equipment that the people want. Then we set it outside. And then they come and pick it up. So um, I'm sure there's a better way to do it, a safer way. But for right now, that's at least what I can think of is, is going to work the best. Right, right. So I know that you're someone who's, who studies uh, business models closely and has a put, put a lot of thought in your own uh, business model and, and, and obviously with the way that that evolves. Is there something that you wish you would have done kind of looking back now already? Um, anything you wish you had done with your business model um, that would have been sort of crisis, more crisis proof? Or on the flip side, is there something that you did with your business model that you think is really helping you to be resilient in this moment? Yeah. Um, so I would say I would have, for my personal business, I would have probably saved more. Um, you know, I have enough saved up where I'm, I'll, I think I'll be okay. Um, from Evolution Athletics standpoint, uh, Tyler kind of takes care of the books there, but he's done a, an excellent job of, you know, following the Dave Ramsey, you know, have, have a six month rainy day fund. And, um, at times, you know, I've been like, Hey man, can we just like cut loose and let go of some of this? And he's like, no, we need to hang on to it. So, um, situation like this, I'm, I'm glad to have him as a business partner cause he, he made the right call and uh, stuck to his guns on that one. So that's, that's helped. Check out part two of my conversation with Travis Barrett as he talks about the support they've received from the Lawrence community, but also an interesting story about advice he received from his landlord. Stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching.